how can I do the show if I can't make noise? But you told me to be quiet. No, I didn't. You're on the air right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm heartbroken, okay? You got me so confused. Sorry of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.'s election coverage special with James Stephen Davis and voting absentee <laughs> Wiley S. Drake, but I'll be there shortly. You're on, Mr. Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this election night version of the Wiley Drake show. Um, we already have some uh, news, some of which is interesting, some which is very sad. We have had a shooting, an active shooter, at the a polling place in Azusa. Azusa is a little town just north uh, west of where we are. Uh, you get on a 210 freeway, you drive right past it. The um, civilian arms training uh, level one up in Burl Canyon is just north of Azusa. So we definitely know where Azusa is. Um, we were in Azusa yesterday. Yes, we were. Uh, a little earlier in the day, but we were in Azusa. We have one dead, uh, multiple people shot near an Azusa polling station. The heavily armed assailant opened fire. They have not um, got uh, him captured yet. They are referring to it as an active shooter situation. Uh, needless to say, I'm sure they're going to up the security for everything around there. Um, I, I hate to use bad news to push a, a project of ours, but now's the time to do it. Amen. The, um, one of the things that we are dedicated to do and we do every single month is we teach the alert class, which is how you as a citizen survive an active shooter event. So if you are in a gun-free zone and a bad guy shows up like this active shooter, at the pole in Azusa to try to kill you, we teach you how to survive. It is a one-day course. It's on Saturday, November 19th here at the First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park. Uh, it is only $50. Uh, we give you uh, coffee and rolls in the morning. We buy you lunch, and when we teach you how to stay alive. We love it when you bring yourself and your family because your kids need to learn how to do this, and we'll take kids as young as 10 if you want to bring them. Uh, certainly your missus needs to know how to do it. So to um, get more information on the class or to get registered on the class, what you need to do is call 951-261-0799. Put in the word, text the word ALERT, A-L-E-R-T, and we'll tell you what that means uh, when you call. Put in your name, your phone number, push the button, and as soon as I can get a call back to you, I will call, answer whatever questions you have, and make sure you're registered for the class. The reason why we need you to pre-register is so you know how many lunches to have available for you when we get this thing going. The next thing we have, back to the election, they are already calling four states on behalf of Trump and only one state for Hillary. So we have Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, South Carolina being called for Trump and only um, Vermont being called for Hillary. So as it stands right now, we are over 30 electoral votes for Trump and only nine electoral votes for Hillary. Uh, they also are surprisingly calling the popular vote and the latest information we have on that is that um, Trump leads Hillary by popular votes of 580,000, more than a half a million, popular votes for Trump ahead of Clinton. So certainly that's very interesting. Well, to say the least, folks, we're in an interesting time here. Time as in it's uh, 5 o'clock or a few minutes after here in California. That means it's after 8 o'clock. That means the polls are closed on the East Coast. Is that correct? 
Uh, they will be closing momentarily. Okay, so they close at 8 p.m. And, and they're, they... they're saying they're going to start <laughs> releasing poll information from the East Coast starting at about 8.30. It takes them that long to get the counts done yeah. and uh, get all the uh, fake, false uh, ballots put in um, and all the dead people reburied who voted. So it takes them a while to get everything <laughs> done. Put all the can... people back yeah, in the yeah, grave. Yeah, put them all back in the ground. Yeah, they get them back in the grave before they can release the numbers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in all honesty, we knew, and I say we, all of us knew, that there were going to be tough things going on, and we just have to continue to pray now, and we're going to talk a little bit later, uh, and I'm going to encourage you to go to the Facebook, but before we do, I need to go do something technical, and I'm going to allow Mr. Davis to continue on with the show. Do it, sir, please. Let me tell you what's interesting about this active shooter in Azusa. We had received intel over the last couple of days that there was going to be terrorist attacks on polling places, but what we were being told is that it was all back east, Texas and other states, generally southern states, mm -hmm. back east. So for the first active shooter at a polling place to take place in California, okay, that was unanticipated. Yeah, but it's right. also why we stress the fact that you have to be prepared. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and, and one of the things that I want us to make very sure of, we talked about this. We had a guest on this morning that was talking about living in Norway and coming to this country and so forth and talking about freedom and the lack thereof. But um, we need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, what we do here is of a Bible basis nature. We don't just run up and say, hey, we got to protect ourselves kind of thing. Uh, unless it is, of course, in keeping with the Word of God. Jesus himself was dealing with the same kind of problems we're dealing with right now uh, in the government. <clears throat> and he said to his disciples, there are three things you need to do. Number one, you need to pray. That's never changed and never will. He said, number one, you must pray. Number two, uh, you must prepare. Now that depends on who's talking about the preparation. That depends on who, what they mean by prepare and so forth. And as Mr. Davis has so aptly pointed out, we believe that you ought to be prepared in a way that you would know how to protect your family uh, from the bad guys. And that is why we have the active shooter classes. That's why we have the alert classes and so forth. And then last but not least, it says uh, in the scripture, in Luke, uh, where Jesus was talking, that you not only need to be uh, indeed in a prayer mode and in a preparation mode, but in a arming mode, that is to arm yourself. He used the example, said, do you have a, 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 an arm? Do you have an imp implement of arms, a sword? And they said, no. And they, he said, well, then sell one of your garments. Sell a very necessary piece of your attire uh, that wasn't like a frivolous I mean garment, it was a, a very needed garment, but he said sell one and go buy yourself a sword and be armed. So we encourage you, I encourage you to get in touch with us, let us help you, let us talk with you about it. Uh, there's, uh, you know, we don't have you sign any contracts or, or anything like that, so it's not something we're trying to rope you into. We do want you to get involved, we do think you'll like it. And the only thing that we require, if you will, is what Brother David said, and that is we do need to know how to prepare food for the day, and uh, we don't like to run out. So if five people say they're going to show up and we have enough food for five or six, and then 20 show up, then we're in deep trouble. So we don't want that to happen. So hey, guess what? What? I didn't realize this. What's that? I hate her guts. And she, now she's dead. Who? Janet Reno. Janet Reno. She died yesterday. Oh. Wow. And and you want to talk about predicting the future? What she said was was Donald Trump will never be president in my lifetime. Well, she died yesterday. <laughs> she should have been really careful about making that prediction. Yeah, I agree. Because that was imprecatory prayer, if I ever heard it yeah, coming and, from her. And, and let yeah, me tell you why I dislike her so much. She murdered many children at the Waco standoff in Texas. Absolutely. I understand you had a very bizarre cult. I understand you had a guy who was slightly nuts. I understand that it was a unpleasant situation. However, they had no, they, the government, 
had no justification for killing children, setting fire to the place, using tanks to mow down buildings that killed all them children. When all they could have done is build a wall around the place and just wait it out. Yeah. Instead of going in and killing children. She never apologized for that. She was also the attorney general during Ruby Ridge in which a baby was killed because of a slight argument over possession of a firearm Second Amendment issue. Mm. So needless to say, Janet Reno was never one of my big favorites in the government. And so for her to have passed the day before the election, I find that uh, biblical in nature. Amen. Do we have a caller on the line? Ladies and gentlemen, when we're on the line here, we have a phone line that's open. Very much so, just like our microphone is open, but we have a separate phone line. And if you call in, you can identify yourself or not. You don't have to. It will ask you to, but if you do not want to be identified and you want to remain anonymous, just simply ignore that request. Nobody's going to criticize you. Nobody's going to say you won't do it. So when you call in, we hear a bong, and we ask you to identify yourself if you'd like. But if you want to remain anonymous, that's quite all right. If all you want to do is listen in, you don't want to watch me or Brother Davis on television, you just soon just listen. All you got to do is pick that phone up and call 712-432-1690. And after you get that, it will ask you to identify yourself. Just ignore that. But you do have to put in your access code, which is 399-430-POUND. Now, that number does not identify you. That identifies you only by number so that we can put you through uh, the phone line. So if you want to identify yourself, you can. If you want to ask a question, you can. Whatever you'd like to do. We're proceeding. We're going to talk a little bit about something we're going to do tomorrow and why we're going to do it. And it has to do with the situation we find ourselves in in this country. But, uh, Mr. Davis, anything else that you want to give us by way of update? Uh, we understand it looks at least a little bit positive at this point uh, for uh, Mr. Trump over Hillary. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'll tell you what scares me more than anything else is how with the availability of Hillary's history where you can Google Hillary and, and literally Google the crimes of Hillary and all the dead people that Hillary had something to do with her deaths uh, and a few other things, how any sane person in the United States could vote for Hillary Clinton is beyond my understanding. Now I understand that I'm just a regular guy and I understand that I only have a doctorate of law from a nice university and a doctor of divinity through the Southern Baptist Church and I understand that I've only been certified as a class action plaintiff's counsel and I only was in the military for 30 years and I'm only a retired law enforcement officer. I understand I don't have a whole lot of intelligence and a whole lot of experience, but with that little bit of training and experience, I can give the opinion that if you vote for Hillary Clinton, then you meet the 5150 definition of an insane person and you should not be allowed to walk the street by yourself because you're a danger to yourself and others. Amen. And I agree with that. And um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some other dangers that are going on. Not people that are 5150, maybe as much as people that uh, allow their jobs, their duties to get out of hand. Back many years ago, when I first started working here at the church, I worked very closely with child protective service agencies because it appeared to me at that point that those people, the supervisors and the counselors and the people that worked there, it appeared to me that they were concerned about the welfare of the children. But I found out later that they were not concerned about the welfare of children because it was obvious they were abusing children themselves. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking about my opinion. I'm talking about the opinion of a jury. You see, recently there was accusations by a mother and by her attorney 
that indeed Child Protective Services had abused the child. Now, do we have another caller on the line? Okay, we'll move ahead. Now, what happened? Well, this lady said, the County Department of Children and Family Services lied about the mother. They violated the mother's privacy, her constitutional rights, and the child's rights. And they went to court. It was taken to trial. And a jury of their peers. There were five people that were charged with being liable for lying to the mother, violating her privacy, and her constitutional rights. There was Susan Pender, Kimberly Rogers, Musayan Baleban, Elba Pinedo, and Victoria Scheel. Those five people were charged by this mother and her attorney and the court to take it to a jury trial. And it didn't just go before the judge. It went before a jury trial. Can, can I interrupt sure. you for one second? Let me tell you why this is even more impressive, ladies and gentlemen. And Sean McMillan, who is the plaintiff's counsel, gutsy son of a gun. But let me tell you what is so impressive about this. What is so impressive about this is he was suing the County of Los Angeles Division of Children and Family Services. And he was doing it in a... County of Los Angeles Superior Court. So maybe perhaps there might have been a little bit of prejudice there, and lo and behold, he prevailed. Yes. And so he took those people to trial, and we'll talk more about that trial in just a moment. Do we have a caller that would like to ask a question or make a comment? Yeah, Pastor Wiley, this is Bob over Ruben's home. Yes. Bob who? We're Ruben Israel is right here. Uh, he's made a, a, a kind of a prediction. I'd like him to share his thoughts and prayers. Uh, here's, here's Ruben Israel. Well, Ruben Israel, this is Wiley Drake. You're my brother in Christ, and you're live Hello. on the Wiley Drake Show now. Share with us what's on your heart. Hey, Pastor Drake, how you doing? Doing fine. I, I don't know. Bob just gave me the phone right now. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, are we? Uh, you're you're we're live. Here, we're just sitting here, Pastor, watching the uh, the election and uh, hoping that Christians went out to vote. And uh, uh, I'm trusting it's going to be a landslide. Well, we certainly hope that you're right, and I would assume that you're hoping it's a landslide for Mr. Trump. That's correct. I think the media has uh, tried to hide things and say things, and uh, everything the media has done against him has turned out to be uh, favorable for him. Yeah. And uh, it, it appears that uh, I think there's a lot more people that are embarrassed to say that they're going to vote for him, but once they're inside that booth, we'll pull the uh, lever for him. Yeah. Amen. Well, we certainly want to say thank you to you for your long livelihood, your ministry as you serve the Lord, uh, being a street preacher, being an evangelist, being one who tells people sometimes things they don't want to know, but the truth about sin and about the Lord. And we thank you, Reuben, for doing that and for teaching the Word of God and being there with those folks. I appreciate that. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. You're very welcome. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're live here on the air. You just heard from Bob Bible. You also heard from Reuben Israel. They're having a Bible study and a uh, meeting together to discuss uh, the results of what's going on. Uh, before I go back to that trial, uh, Brother Davis, is there anything else you'd like to share there? The, the main thing about this trial was the fact that and I, I'm, I'm trying to make it, you know, I'm trying to make it not too legalistic, but generally, when you sue 
a government employee, who you're suing is the government, not the employee. In other words, because of what's called sovereign immunity, the uh, employee gets protection from any personal liability, personal ward against them. And that's how these things are ordinarily done. <coughs> so what the first challenge that Sean McMillan had to have is he had to figure out a cause of action, a statement against the individual uh, social workers to be able to state a cause of action against them so he could go after them personally. That right there is a major hurdle uh, in the lawsuit. Obviously he was successful. And then to take the matter to trial, trials are uh, warfare in a courtroom. Yeah. I mean, I have done my fair share of actual jury trials. They are stressful. They are difficult. You have to think on your feet. You never know what's going to come up next. They are uh, amazing in the stamina that's required to get through a trial. We know that when we showed up, Pastor Drake and I showed up uh, to help uh, Sean McMillan move all of his stuff out of the courtroom, we were moving a lot of stuff. Yeah. And so that's what they needed for the seven week trial that he had to go through. Uh, so to then get the results that he got, which I'm gonna turn this back over to Pastor Drake for the results, um, uh, is I hate to use the word miracle because that word gets used a lot, but it was certainly a significant accomplishment if you want to use that instead of a miracle. Yeah, and I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that tomorrow morning, uh, the Wiley Drake Show, that's normally on at 9 a.m. here in the headquarters of the Congressional Prayer Conference, we're going on, as they say in Hollywood, we're going on location tomorrow. We're going on location over to the Board of Supervisors headquarters in Los Angeles where this trial was held. We're going to go there before the uh, meeting and we're going to be there till the end of it if necessary uh, because my understanding is that unless we speak to a particular issue, if we want to address them publicly, we have to wait till the end. I think that's uh, a plan on their part, but that's okay. We're committed to be there till it's over. And uh, we're committed to be there until the fat lady sings. And many of you know the fat lady sings when the thing is over. But anyway, uh, we're going to go there tomorrow and we're going to say we are under the understanding that the jury has said Susan Pender, Kimberly Rogers, Musician Belayan, and Elma Pinedo, and Victoria Steele, we're under the impression that indeed they were found guilty. Hang on. Hello, this is Wiley Drake. We're live on the air. If you'd like to talk to me right now, go right ahead. If not, call back after 6 o'clock when we'll be off the air. Hi, Wiley. It's Markham Robinson. Well, Markham Robinson, God bless you, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard me talk about this gentleman, and most of what I've said has been pretty good. But... Uh, right. <laughs> he does work uh, with the party that I had the privilege to be a candidate for, uh, not only once but twice. And uh, Brother Markham Robinson is with the uh, Independent Party of California. And uh, Brother Robinson, what's on your mind? Right. Well, the American Independent Party is fighting on behalf of uh, voters and uh, uh, will be uh, uh, doing something really dramatic. Uh, I'd like you to call me up after 6 p.m. and just uh, and uh, let me know if we can put your name uh, to the effort. All right. Uh, well, we'll, we'll be what it is uh, when you call me back. We'll be more than happy to do that. We go off the air at 6 o'clock, and right after 6 o'clock, we'll call you and we'll discuss where we go from here. Call my cell phone number. Do you have it? Uh, why don't you give that to me? Okay. And the cell phone number is. All right, I'll. I might, I might be voting, so we'll, I don't know exactly. Okay, well, I'll call you. I'll call you right after six o'clock. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. God bless. Somebody new on the line. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Markham Robinson with the American Independent Party, the party which I ran for 
uh, with as vice president with Dr. Alan Keyes and also as president uh, and also as a write-in candidate. But do we have someone on the prayer line with us or on the communications yeah, line? Yeah, this is Bob Bible again. We have a new uh, person for your prayer line. His name is Manny, a older guy as a son that comes to Ruben's Bible study. I've been telling him about your ministry and uh, he'd like to say hi and maybe have a couple of words and a prayer. All right. Put him on. What's his name? Uh, Manny. All right. Put Manny. Manny. Probably 45 years old. Put Manny on. Manny, are you there? Hey, hello. How are you? I'm fine, Manny. This is Pastor Wiley Drake, and we're on the television show called The Wiley Drake Show. We're a prayer effort. We're a political effort. But most of all, we'd like to pray and like to share. And if there's anything you'd like to share with us that we can pray for you about, go right ahead and tell us on live television right now. Um, yeah, just I would like to um, ask for prayer. I'm trying to put together uh, a project to glorify God through um, creating and editing videos uh, uh, for the Lord. So I'd like to lift that up to be able to put that together and uh, uh, and uh, create it and, and uh, bring glory to God through it. Well, brother, we certainly will be praying with you and for you, and we would encourage you when you get a chance, go to the Internet, to our show. It's called the WileyDrakeShow.com, and watch the show. And uh, then also later, uh, let you and I get together and talk a little shop, talk about uh, some video work that maybe we could work together on. Amen, yeah. Amen. So thank you so much, and we'll be praying for you. Where do you live, Manny? What town? I live in the city of Southgate. Okay, well, we're not too far away. We're down in Buena Park. So uh, thank you. We'll pray with you and for you. And uh, uh, get the, uh, the place to go on the web to watch our show, and you'll see it tonight. What else would you like to share? Well, I'm here um, watching the election at Reuben Israel's house with some brothers and his wife, and um, it's an exciting night to see what the Lord is going to do, and uh, who's going to be the next president. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Manny. God bless you. We're going to continue. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, you know that some of your followers have a sense of humor. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I know this is an election night. I know this is really serious, but this is too funny. I've got to say it. <clears throat> One of our watchers has said, just before I die, I'm going to swallow a bag of popcorn kernels. My cremation will be epic. <laughs> All right. Oh, good. I heavens. love it. I love oh, it. Oh, that's I love horrible. It. Well, that is. But anyway, uh, Manny uh, was there with us, and somebody else is. Anybody else on the line with us at this point? Well, we uh, we thank the Lord. Uh, I just got a text from a person that was texting me earlier, and uh, they said that they just returned from the movies, and uh, on election night, uh, and uh, I asked the person what did they see, and they said Miss Sloan. I don't, do you recognize that movie? Miss Sloan? Uh, it was a new one that just came out oh, and I, okay. haven't, I haven't seen it. I haven't the slightest idea what that means. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they did see Miss Sloan and um, I have not seen it, but I'll hear a report on it, I'm sure. And uh, we'll continue to hear reports on the election. And my electioneering uh, expert, uh, tonight is none other than James Stephen Davis. Mr. Davis, what's on your heart? Um, they're talking about what's going on in Florida. Florida has always been referred to as a swing state. Um, and what we're uh, showing right now uh, is that there are three counties left to be counted in Florida. And right now it's too close to call. 
Um, so as a result of this, um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that one. Um, but we should know it fairly quickly. Now, of course, Florida was <coughs> the state that had the big problem between Bush and uh, Al Gore. And was that the chads and the chads and the dips and the dabs? Absolutely and all? <laughs> stinking, Lulee, all of the above. Um, so it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in Florida and whether or not uh, it's going to go pro-Trump. But we are now right at 5.30 Pacific time, which puts us right at 8.30 That's right. Um, East Coast. So we're going to start getting more releases, and we will follow them um, as we know what's going on. Um, we still have, still have a problem with uh, Azusa and the uh, terrorist attack at the pole. Uh, they still apparently have not found the shooter yet, so we're still working on that. He's probably in a polling booth somewhere voting. Well, he might be at the Democratic headquarters. A Democratic headquarters oh, voting. Oh, that's not, I'm sorry, that's not good. Okay. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow we'll, of course, certainly be talking about what happened tonight, but uh, we'll only be on here another half hour, and then we're going to go off. Come what may with the election, we're going to go off the air because... Uh, we just do it that way. <laughs> we don't have to, but we will. But we will be going tomorrow morning, doing our show tomorrow morning, in the chambers of the board meeting of the Board of Supervisors in Los Angeles. And I want to be able to tell them tomorrow that we, that is me, you, and others, have prayed for them. So would you agree with me in prayer for Hilda Solis, she is called the uh, supervisor of the first district. Mark Ridley Thomas, who is a supervisor of the second district. Sheila Kuehl, who is supervisor of the third district. Don Kanabi, who is supervisor of the fourth district. And Michael D. Antonovich, supervisor of the fifth district. And Lori Glasgow, executive officer. Uh, of this organization and this was printed back in May of 2016 mm -hmm. and I would ask all of you to agree and remind you and me that the Bible says where any two agree touching anything you will hear our prayer Lord and so tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock show I will be sharing with these one two three four five six officers of the Board of Supervisors that we have prayed for them tonight and that we will continue to pray for them until they get their act together. We will also be asking them about those five people that were ruled by the jury to be guilty, to be guilty of lying to the original judge, to be guilty of lying to the mother, to be guilty of violating the mother's privacy, to be guilty of uh, violating her privacy as well as her constitutional rights, and those people, those five people, Susan Pender, Kimberly Rogers, Musean Yen uh, Balaban, and Elba Pinedo, and Victoria Shield uh, will be prayed for as well, and the two defense counsels who failed to honor their oath of office, Thomas Gutierrez and Candace Nelson. And we want to say to the Board of Supervisors two things. Number one, we're watching and we're praying. Number two, why have these people not been fired? Are they still on the payroll? Are the taxpayers still paying them even though they've been adjudicated? even though they've been found guilty by a jury of their peers, are they still on the payroll and why? So we'll be asking those questions tomorrow. They are calling, um, surprisingly, they're calling a victory for Trump in Georgia, a victory for Trump in Virginia. Um, Florida, boy, it's a tight race. 61% of the precincts have reported Trump is leading but only by a 48.6 to a 48.4 uh, differential between him and Clinton. 
So Florida is going to come down to the nitty gritty. <clears throat> but we have two more states that have been called in favor of Trump. Somebody has just asked me, what are you doing? And obviously, by hearing the way I'm talking, you can tell I'm doing Mr. Davis's favorite thing, chewing on ice. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. And uh, anyway, um, I'm going to answer that text back in a few moments. But right and now, would you I'm going to answer it correctly. Uh, why? Put more ice in my mouth? No, absolutely not. Okay, how to? Working in a coal mine. Working in a coal mine. Working in a coal mine. Twelve yeah. hour shift. No, that's not it. Okay. No, okay. Fine. All right. Give us any other reports that you have while I text this back. Oh, Marco Rubio got reelected as a senator of Florida. So that's interesting. What, what, we're, what we're beginning to see here, uh, the claim that uh, Hillary Clinton won Delaware, yeah. It's claims that she won Massachusetts, yeah. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Um, what is interesting, though, is it looks like the Republicans are going to hold the Senate. And so, uh, while they certainly aren't the nicest people in the world, at least, um, if, in fact, they hold, uh, that's going to make a big difference. And so Hillary won't have all of the power that she would like to have. I'm pretty sure that they're going to get very graphic uh, about not doing like they did with Obama and giving that little snot um, anything that he wanted. So uh, let's hope for that. Amen. But uh, we are now at uh, 8.35, so we're going to start seeing the poll results coming in even faster, um, and it's it's going to be a long night. Absolutely. Going to be a long, long night, and uh, we praise the Lord for um, what appears to be some good things happening. Mr. Rubio, I believe you said, was... Got reelected re to the Senate from the state of Florida. All right. And we want to remind you that tomorrow morning we'll be live on location, as they say in Hollywood. The Whitey Drake Show will not be in the studio. The Whitey Drake Show will not be on the road. We've done that before, too. Absolutely. But we will be, Lord willing, not in jail either. <laughs> Lord willing, we'll be on location in the hallway or in the byways or wherever we're going to be, somewhere there, uh, with... Uh, the Board of Supervisors, live with the Board of Supervisors from Los Angeles. Hilda Solis, Mark Ridley Thomas, Sheila Kuehl, Don Kanabi, Michael Antonovich, and Lori Glasgow. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, live on the Wiley Drake Show. Now, is there anyone else on the phone line? We have what we call, I call, an old-fashioned party line. You call it up and you can talk. You can talk while I'm talking. You can talk before I talk. Or you can talk after I talk. Whatever you'd like to do, you're on the air, on the line. So call us if you're not on the line, 712-432-1690. Put in your access code, 399-430-POUND. Mr. Davis, what in the world's happening in politics? Well, we're starting to get reports in. Uh, so far, Clinton is in the lead, but... We still have a lot of other things yet to close. So we have certain states that are very important that he has to win. Ohio, unfortunately, seems to be trending towards Clinton, and Ohio is a state that he probably needs to win. He's still ahead in Florida, which is interesting. And so it's at this point, I, got, I can guarantee you that for the Wiley Drake show, it's going to be too close to call. Amen. Well, we are hoping that the Lord's will will be done. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Whatever happens tonight, if tomorrow morning we get up and say, well, okay, it's pretty obvious this person has won. It really, in one respect, does not matter because we're in such sad shape in this country we need a change, ladies and gentlemen. We need to have what the Founding Fathers did in this country many, many years ago. They had two, they had two congressional 
what do you call them? Congressional? Uh, um, Continental Congress? Continental Congress. They had two Continental Congresses which set up our legal system, which set up our Constitution, and now that we're in such sad trouble, no matter who's elected, we need to have, and I'm going to use this term, and I know people are going to criticize me for it, but we need to have a revolution in this country. We need to have a righteous, rev blah, a righteous revolution in America. And I would like for you to go and see my friend, Larry Clayman, make the case for this. And whatever he says on that video, I agree with 100%. But I want you to go to the Facebook, go to your Facebook, up at the top of the line, put in Wiley Drake, and go on my Facebook. It's wide open, you don't have to have permission. Go to Wiley Drake Facebook, and go down to the one that deals with Larry Clayman's statement before the Tuesday election. And he's going to talk about there that we need to have a third Continental Congress. And we're going to do it shortly after the polls close. We'll be doing it sometimes next year. And we want you to be a part of it. We, that is myself, and our staff, and our other people here have agreed. We are behind that, and we're going to work with him to put together this Continental... Help me again, I'm losing the name. Continental what? Continental Congress. Continental Congress. That's what he happens when... Call, he wants to call the third one... The third one, yeah. Where there's been two. The first one was just a letter of complaint to King George back before the Revolutionary War. The Second Continental Congress was during the Revolutionary War, and it led to, first, the Articles of Confederation, which was the precursor to the Constitution, and then it ultimately led to the Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. The third Continental Little Congress that Larry Clayman wants to call, which I think is a good idea, is a way to go outside of the political system and let the government know how unhappy we are, we the people are, yeah. with how things are being run. That's right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to do two or three things. Let me do it step by step. Number one, go to Facebook, to the Wiley Drake section, and look at this presentation. It's only about three minutes or four minutes long. It's not very long. He has a long one on there, but there's a short one, and that's the one that's the top of the list on Facebook, and that is in reference to this Third Continental Congress. And I want you to do that. Number one, I want you to go, and I want you to listen to it. Number two, I want you to answer my question. Do you agree that we need a Third Continental Congress? Do you agree with that? Yes or no? If you say yes, you're welcome to tell us why. If you say no, you're welcome to tell us why. And if you'd like to book yourself for the Wiley Drake Show and say, I would like to answer that question on the air and say why, I want to put you in touch with my producer. He's seated right here on my right, and uh, I want him to give out his... Uh, text number so you can text him and simply say in your text, Third Continental Congress, I want to talk about it. And Mr. Davis, give them your text number, please. My text number in which you can sign up for our alert class, or if you want to come on to the show, you can let me know you'd like to come on the show, or if you have some other question mm -hmm. that you'd like to ask, like what the heck is a Continental Congress and why should I care? Uh, and if you are brave enough to deal with my puns and jokes, uh, then you can text me at any time at 951-261-0799. Put in a one-word uh, hint as to what it's about. It may be alert, it may be show, it may be whatever it is, 
and then put in your name, your phone number, and as soon as I can call you, I will call you back and see what service I can be of to you. Please be involved. Ladies and gentlemen, I am firmly convinced that whoever wins, we're in deep trouble. And I believe the only way to get out of deep trouble is what Larry Clayman has said, and that is we must have a third Continental Congress. We must go to the government and we must demand a revolution, a righteous revolution. And by the way, when we had the Revolutionary War, and I'm hoping, as, as uh, Brother Larry would say, that we can have a revolution without a war, However, I know Larry Clayman well enough, and I know me and Brother Davis well enough, that if we have to have a war, we're ready for it. But we want to do it peaceably, we want to do it without violence, and we want to move ahead. And I hope you'll move with us. Go uh, to a Facebook and check it out. And go to that number, send Mr. Davis a text, 951-261-0700. Nine, nine. Send him that text and ask him any question for that matter and we'll be glad to have you on the program. He is the producer of this show which means he will try to sign you up try to get you to come on board try to work it out and by the way ladies and gentlemen let me just simply say I'm going to do part of the producer's job here for a moment. I'm going to say to you if you would like to be a part of this program call the producer and the producer will set it up so you can come into the studio here in Buena Park. Or if you're nearby, uh, travel distance by, uh, we will come to you. We'll bring the studio to you. We have a portable studio that works very well, and we'll be glad to bring the studio to you. One of the things I'd like mm -hmm. to say as the producer of the show is, is one of the things you're going to like about this show is we may not agree with your position on something. We may not even understand your position on something. And certainly, it may be something that maybe we're not the most interested in. But this is a public access show. And so if you have something that you wish to put on the air and see what people think about it, by all means, give us a call. Now, certainly there are certain things that we ain't going to put on. We're not going to be able to put on pornographic pictures. You're not going to be able to sell dope on the show. Uh, you're not going to be able to say that I think all cops ought to be killed on the show. Well, we're not going to tolerate that. But if you want to talk about how maybe the Libertarian Party should have done better, or if you want to talk about whether or not the legalization of marijuana is a good or bad thing, maybe you want to talk about the... Um, whether or not the transgender LGBT community has good news or bad news. Okay, even if you support that, at least we're going to give you the time to talk and we're going to let people call and ask questions. What I find interesting though is on more than one occasion, because if you haven't figured out what my political and religious bent are, uh, you should know by now, but I have on many occasions called and challenged people to debate an issue with me, and you know what? Haven't got a single person to take me up on that offer yet. Well, praise the Lord. No, they got no hooks for. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got about uh, 12 minutes left on this program. And uh, we don't want to necessarily just have to take it all the way to the end, but I think we will tonight. And if there's any other questions you like, someone just sent me a text and says, what kind of food do you like? And I said, well, I like country food. I also like Hispanic food. I also like Indian food. I love curry. I think curry is a great spice. Uh, a little spicy for me. Well, I love it. And I said, in all honesty, almost anything. I, very few foods I don't like. And uh, so anyway. Okay, um, we, have, we have an interesting, and this is one of these ones that I, the problem with dealing with the Internet is it's hard to tell what is or isn't valid on the Internet. Yeah. People have a tendency to kind of sort of put false things on the Internet. Um, what we have now is they are now saying that Trump has won Florida and that it was a, quote, landslide victory. So 
I'm not exactly sure what that is, but if they're calling uh, Trump winning Florida, that's a major issue. So, you know, I don't know if it's true or false, you know, if it's one of those fake things, but um, that certainly changes things if, in fact, Trump has won Florida. Amen. Amen. Well, we don't know what's going on. We've got about 10 minutes left before the hour of 6 p.m. in California. That is 9 p.m. in the, what some people would call the Midland there on the East Coast over there with uh, uh, the place that uh, we refer to as Washington, D.C. And by the way, I'll, before can, we go, to, go ahead. No, can go I ahead. ask a question? Sure. I, I'm, I, because I respect your position on things, I'm going to show you this before I bring it up. But this makes no sense to me. This, these are poll of protesters against Trump. What were they? I don't understand the message you were trying to say. Well, it's I don't either. It says they hate something, they hate Trump or whatever, but it says bare-chested protesters removed from Trump's polling site. And uh, I dare say it's blotted out, of course, uh, on here, and, and I appreciate that. But uh, those are, I would assume, two females. Yes, they, they look like girls to me. Seem to have, but uh, ladies... <laughs> Uh, if you're burying your chest to make you look better, uh, it's not helping. I, I don't. I still don't understand the message. Okay, if you show I don't up either. topless, what is you trying to say to Trump if you show up topless? I have no idea. Okay, I didn't. I just don't understand <laughs> the message. I'm sorry. I have no idea. Uh, but I, I thought of a story that I was going to tell, and I forgot what it was now. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, well, we praise the Lord for the opportunity to be here with you tonight. We're going to be with you tomorrow morning. We will be live from Los Angeles, and uh, we thank the Lord. Oh, by the way, what I was going to say is, is that we refer to the area of government. We refer to that area back there as our capital, and we refer to it as Washington, D.C. And several years ago, when I was back there, as the representative for the Washington, D.C. Congressional Prayer Conference, someone brought it to my attention. Did you know? And I had to say, nope, didn't know that. Did you know that the place we're at, Washington, D.C., did you know that it's called the District of Columbia? And I said, yes, I did know that. But they said, do you know the origin of that? And I said, well, uh, no, I don't. I would guess it probably had something to do with one of our founding fathers, i.e. a man named Christopher Columbus. Therefore, they would name our capital uh, the District of Columbia, short for Columbus. And they said, no. The reason is on top of the capital. And they walked out and pointed me to the top of the Capitol where there's a statue on top of the dome. And they said, do you know who that statue is of? And I said, no, I do not. And they said, well, that is the statue of the pagan goddess Columbia. The pagan goddess Columbia. And so in history, when they decided that the area where the government was was not a state. It was to be a district. Correct. And I, we don't get into that tonight. But I said, well, why in the world would we as a Christian nation name our capital after a pagan god? And they looked at me like, we don't know. And I said, well, I know this, our birth certificate. And, and the country has one, even though Obama doesn't. Our birth certificate says we were here for the glory of God, the advancement of the Christian faith, and the establishment of a righteous body politic. And so we should not be calling our capital the District of Columbia. So as a moderator and a mediator and an ambassador for the kingdom of God, and an ambassador for Yeshua HaMashiach, we stood on the steps 
of the Supreme Court and declared that this country's capital would no longer be called the District of Columbia, but it would be called Washington, D.C., the District of Christ. And I'm waiting for a politician who's got enough chutzpah to stand up and say, I want a law that says we're going to change the title of the district to the district of Christ. Until that's done, we're going to continue to refer to it as a district of Christ. And so that's just my little historical I, story. I like the word chutzpah. Chutzpah, I like I that. like chutzpah. Yeah. I like that way. Yeah, I like, like the way. Like okay, the let's way. talk about something else real quick. Okay. One of the things that you are certainly aware of, we hope, is that in addition to uh, being an ambassador of God here on earth, we also run a homeless shelter. Yes. And let me tell you, um, running a homeless shelter, it can be challenging. However, one of the things that it does do is it brings out the best in people. And so while I'm trying to get a whole bunch of things done today, we get a call from one of our supporters who said, hi, I got food, come get it. Amen. And so I had to buy you know, make a, a round robin to do what I did. And lo and behold, one of our very strong supporters is a company called Civilian Arms Training Source. And if you Google that, uh, you can go up onto either their Facebook page or their web page. You'll see that the owner is a gentleman by the name of Tim George. And uh, as uh, in result of a couple of other things, uh, we know Tim George real well. I'm not gonna give up any secrets, but uh, Pastor Drake does know him very well. And um, by the way, as you used to watch TV and on the Ed Sullivan show and on the Johnny Carson show, somewhere in the commercial statements, they would say, Mr. Uh, who did the, uh, Mr. Sullivan's hair and suit are by Hollywood Suits and the shop that did his hair. And they would also say on Here's Johnny, Mr. Carson's hair by so-and-so. Well, here we are again. Mr. Drake's hair by Tim George because he has a shop close here that's called Sheer Artisan. Art Artisan. Now, what's interesting about Sheer is it's spelled Sheer as in scissor. <laughs> so that's kind of cute. Yeah. Uh, but and he also owns uh, the Civilian Arms uh, Training Source. They are the ones that do the actual firearms training on how you win a gunfight. Yeah. And so I want to say thanks to you, George, and your company for donating food to uh, the sanctuary today. I, it was my honor to pick it up. Yes, I'll bring back your uh, carton box. Um, Maybe. Because i got to get it back to you, and I promise I'll bring that back to you. But uh, thank you very much for your donation today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And several people have already made me aware of the fact that they appreciated those nice sandwiches. Uh, that's Arkansas for sandwiches. Absolutely. But, <laughs> but they enjoyed those. In fact, one Arkansas Baptist preacher had one of them for late lunch today. And well, you should. And it was good. And thank you, Mr. George. And thank you. Every once in a while, I'll have somebody call me up and say, Wiley, I watched your show. What happened to you? And they said, you used to be about a lot heavier. And I said, yeah, 50 pounds heavier. And you used to have white hair. I said, well, I lost 50 pounds and found a good barber by the name of Tim George that knows how to color my hair and make me look a little bit more presentable. And I'm not afraid of getting old. In fact, I like getting old. When you think of the alternative, I want to get older and older. Okay, we're starting to get reports in, and I know we're almost done, but okay. this is a report I think is going to keep going. Breitbart and a couple of other news sources are now reporting that the voting machines in Pennsylvania are incorrectly registering votes. And we have one voter who said she pushed the Trump button several times, and it changed to Clinton each and every time. <laughs> so as a result of that, I mean, I think we're going to probably have some problems in Pennsylvania. I think you're right. Well, Pennsylvania has been a problem state, no doubt about that. Ladies and gentlemen, in about two minutes, we're going to go off the air. But I'm going to go off camera before that two minutes because I'm going to stand up.
First, before I stand up, I'm going to turn the phone off. Anybody on the phone? Nobody on the phone? So first thing I'm going to do is turn the phone off. And as I turn the phone off, that ends the phone conversation. And I'm going to stand up and make my way to the camera board. And Mr. Davis is going to make any comments in closing he'd like. And when he's done, I'll turn the cameras off and say, that's a wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'd ask you to do is to please follow what's going on in Azusa with this active shooter um, taking out this polling place. They've had to shut it down, so that brings up an interesting question of how in the world are they going to uh, vote where your polling place has been shut down. So that's uh, going to be interesting to see what they do with it. Um, we certainly want to know what the motive of this terrorist is and uh, <clears throat> go with that. Uh, if you have, it's in California, you can still vote. If you haven't voted, get out and vote. Uh, certainly, we know we'd like you to vote Republican because we think that's uh, the, the, it may be the lesser of two evils, but it's a lot lesser evil uh, than Democrats. So please get out and do that. We look forward to hearing from you tomorrow when we're going to be at the Hall of Justice in Los Angeles asking the Board of Supervisors some very interesting questions. Have a good night. Say your prayers. We'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless and have a great evening.